Okay, let's talk about the AEPA, and there are several AEPA exams. Of course, if you're watching this video, I assume that you are a uh, educator in Arizona or going for your teaching certification. So AEPA, which is uh, Arizona uh, Educator Proficiency Assessment, and specifically, of course, there's a um, series of exams, many, many exams that um, those of you out there who want to teach in Arizona uh, particular subjects, grade levels, etc. have to take. What we're going to be talking about in this video is the elementary education subtest 2 and the code for that is NT or NES uh, 103. Now that's, that's, that's a kind of a lot of stuff so if you're um, it's very specific what I'm talking about. Of course the, the problem that I want to discuss is kind of uh, relates to all types of folks that are studying math but if you're uh, specifically looking at taking this test, the math component of the elementary education is in the subset 2 uh, and you need to know some, um, you know, a decent amount of math. Although you're, you're going to be teaching at the elementary uh, level, you know, you're not just going to be testing on basic elementary math. You need to know more than that. Um, before I get going, I do have a specific um, uh, test prep course for this exam. If you want to check that out, I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you find that you like my teaching style. A little bit about me, I'm a math teacher, taught from middle school all the way through college, so, and I've taken these exams, not this particular one, but they're all pretty much very similar. Um, the Praxis exam, for example, is used in many states. That's the one I've taken many years ago, so I relate to having to study and get ready for these exams, and the thing about it is you really, um, if you, I'm um, I know I'm speaking to a professional educator here, whoever's watching this, or someone who's obviously very intelligent, worked hard, who's in college. I don't have to tell you that, hey, you're going to have to put in the effort uh, to pass these exams. They're not easy. You're going to have to work at it irrespective of where you're coming from. So do your due diligence. And with that being said, I want to go ahead and take a look at this basic math uh, problem here. We'll, we'll kind of use this to illustrate a point. So I have a, 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 uh, some fractions here. And let's say, I don't want you to do this problem, but let's say I wanted you to just tell me what the lowest common denominator is, okay? Now, you're probably like, oh boy, this is a lot of work. If I gave you the same problem, let's say I gave you 3 tenths plus 2 6, this problem, I'm pretty sure most of you out there um, could figure this out. You're like, okay, I know how to find the LCD of this. In other words, I know how to add these fractions, and part of doing that is finding the lowest common denominator. However, what if I give you something more challenging like this? Now, why would I give you a problem like this? Well, instead of, oftentimes, you know, students or people intuitively kind of know how to find the LCD. They know what it means, especially when we're talking about, like, lower um, uh, problems with low uh, numbers with them and integer values. So they're like, okay, I know how to handle it. But when you start increasing the numbers, they, they some people are like, oh, okay, they kind of get flustered. So imagine you were going to teach a student how to add these two fractions. What would be the process of finding the LCD? So if you want to, I would encourage you to pause the video, maybe get it, give it a whirl, see if you can actually um, figure it out, and then we'll go through the answer. Okay, let's go ahead and go through this here. So here's what you do, and there's a couple different approaches that you can take, but effectively you're going to be doing the same thing, you just might look a little bit different. What you want to do is you want to prime factor each of these numbers, okay? So we have 146 as one denominator and 392 as the other. So when you prime factor it, a good way of doing that is to create uh, a factor tree. Okay, so 146, you're like, okay, what's this divisible by? You, you, you know, you start playing around with numbers you want to know some divisibility rules. Something really, especially if you're going to be teaching elementary education. So one of the uh, divisibility rules is if the sum of the digits, like for example, 146 here, the sum of the digits is 1 plus 4 plus 6. So 4 and 6 is 10 and 1. So this sum here is 11, right? So if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the whole number is divisible by 3. Okay, so clearly this isn't. So when you're messing around your calculator trying to break this thing up, it, this is not going to be divisible by 3. But right off the bat, we can divide this by 2. 
and that's oftentimes a good um, way of doing things. And we get 2 times 73. Then you could, you're probably going to mess around. Well, let me kind of not get ahead of myself. So 2 is a prime number. And then 73, you're going to you know check to see, hey, if this thing is you know, divisible by, it's not divisible by 3 because I just went over the divisibility rule. It's not divisible by 2. And you could check some other things, 5, 0. There's a, there's a whole other, matter of fact, if you like my style in one of my um, – uh, playlist there right I have a whole video on divisibility rules it's something that, that you should um, go over but 73 is prime so 2 and 73 uh, is the prime factorization for 146 okay so in other words we can't factor anymore so now let's break down 392 so you don't have to think about what's the biggest number goes into here just start breaking this thing up so 2 times 196 okay I know 392 is going to be divisible by 2 because it ends in 2. And I'm going to take that 196. I'll just divide it by 2 again. It works. So I got 2 times 98. And then I'll take that 98 and divide it by 2 again, and I get 49. And you're like, ooh, 49. That is kind of doesn't seem like a prime number, but I, you, you come to your, your memory, you know, he says, oh, that's 7 times 7, right? So 7 times 7 is 49, and that's it. So here is the prime factorization for 392 and then we have the prime uh, factorization for 146. So what we want to do is look at these numbers. Okay, 146, we can write it this way. 2 times 73, right, is 146. And 392 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the third power times 7 squared, 7 times 7, okay? So this is 392 and this is 146, but we, we, we broke them up and we're uh, looking at these respective numbers in terms of their prime factorization. So how do you find the LCD now? Well, first step is you have to prime factor each of these uh, denominators. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the respective powers. So here I have two by itself, but really this is two to the first, okay? Now you're saying, well, I got two to the first and I got two cubed here. So the, the rule with the LCD is that each one of these powers, every one of these numbers has to be in the LCD, but it's kind of a little bit more, um, I, I, I need to explain this a little bit better. So in other words, we're gonna say, okay, hey, I have a two over here and I have a two cubed. This is two to the first and this is two cubed. So the rule is you just take the highest power of that number. So because 2 cubed is a higher power of 2 than 2 to the first, we're going to take the 2 cubed and put it in our LCD, okay? So now I look at 73, and I go, okay, is there any more 73s, like 73 squared? No. So this 73 by itself has to be part of our LCD. And then what's remaining? A 7 squared. So is there any more 7s? No. So we have to represent this in our LCD. So that leaves us with 73 times 2 cubed times 7 squared. And what we're going to do is just multiply this out. So this is 73 times 2 cubed is 8 times 7 squared is 49. And when I do all this, I'm going to get this number here, 28,616. And this, in fact, is our LCD. So kind of went over this problem pretty quickly um, just to kind of show you this you start to learn this really well you start to teach these concepts early on in uh, elementary school because you're dealing with fractions and then in, in more middle school but then it, this kind of rolls into how we find LCD with algebraic expressions as well so knowing the algorithm knowing the procedure you know being able to understand it um, I thought you know this particular exercise is good okay again you know as an elementary school teacher or any teacher at that, it's not about being able to do the problem. All right, there's a big difference between it, how to do this problem and you know what's going on. All right, what's going on? What's going on? In other words, what is the mechanics? What's the process? And you really got to focus on those things, especially when it comes to math, because whatever the same procedures here are going to apply over here. All right, so let's wrap up this video here. Um, so if you enjoyed this video and you like my teaching style, I literally have hundreds of videos that will serve you well for this exam. If you want to check out my um, uh, test prep course, 
on this particular test. I'll leave the link in the description. I do many courses, uh, math courses for various different tests. Uh, so a lot of people use my content. You know, you're going to be learning from a ma actual math teacher and someone who relates to taking these exams. So my particular um, uh, test, uh, or excuse me, my test prep course for this is extremely comprehensive. So I want to check it out and take a look at it. If you enjoyed the video, would uh, certainly appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know what you think. I try to read the comments uh, on my video as much as I can. It's let you know, it's the way I know how I'm doing. It gives me ideas for future videos as well. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the AEPA elementary uh, education exam, the math component, well, the entire test. Of course, I wish you well. Uh, specifically, I hope you do really well uh, on the math. Um, and if there's a way that my videos help you out, then that's awesome. That's why I do these videos. But thank you for your time and have a great day.